peace and bright that glows in the earthly sky for Jesus is my light oh there's sunshine blessed sunshine peaceful happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face there is sunshine Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Number 249. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh. Angels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope and eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises. Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. and 
Christ and King. Christ is coming over the world victorious, power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. song this morning. How many of you want to do this as an opening song? Everybody stand? Okay, all right. This will be our opening song then. Uh, what did I say? Number 213, Lift Up the Trumpet. Of course we have to stand, don't we? Number 213. Let's all stand. heads as we seek the Lord this morning. Loving and gracious Father, on this Sabbath day we come to worship you, knowing that you are an awesome God that deserves our praise and worship. We simply ask now that your spirit would lead out in our worship of you in our Sabbath school program. Bless us is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, David and uh, Shelley, for leading out in our song service this morning. Uh, David was a member of uh, the school from 1954 to 1958, and we appreciate his leadership. And Shelley was a student of mine. Uh, according to the bulletin, I'm still teaching. Uh, I was teaching from 1968 to Dash, and I don't know exactly what that means, but I, uh, I did not uh, continue and I'm not teaching there now. Uh, I quit teaching there in 1968. But I enjoyed those years, and I would like to welcome all of you to our alumni weekend. Uh, we don't have all of our alumni here this morning yet, but uh, how many of you at Sabbath School are alumni? Let's just get a raised hand there. Okay, we have uh, a good showing. All right, well, uh, you know, this is the Sabbath day, so we have reason to celebrate. It's also alumni weekend, but did you know that there's another reason to celebrate this day? I was talking with uh, my friend Lauren Sutherland. Uh, he's up there on the computer. 
and uh, we had a little discussion about this special event today. What is it? Pie Day. That's right. Now, this is not the opportunity for you to go and gorge yourself on pie. Uh, today, in fact, just a few minutes ago at 926.53, that was pi, the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. And that's important to math teachers. And I was a math teacher here for 11, 13 years. Uh, but that was uh, a few minutes ago. So if you haven't had a chance to celebrate pi, you can do it again tonight at uh, 926. Uh, correct to 10 digits. Yes, I taught here for 13 years and um, enjoyed it very much. We have friends and fond memories from those years. Uh, both our daughters, Marita and Melanie, were born at Feather River Hospital and both attended uh, PGA. My wife, Bonnie, was working at a nurse at that time. Uh, Last week, they, we had a, a memorial for Dottie Hoyland, and uh, we saw Norma Stanley and uh, Terry Madel. Now, I use their maiden names, but uh, they were here uh, last week, and we reminisce about the time that we went to Youth Congress with them in 1969. We were the um, chaperones. Those two girls didn't need chaperones, but uh, we were privileged to attend uh, Youth Congress in Zurich, Switzerland with them. Scott Hoyland was here. I have memories of Scott and his family. Uh, when we first came, it was in 1968. If you remember, the 60s were a turbulent decade. And uh, the Hoylands took us over to San Francisco. Uh, we were from the Midwest. Uh, my wife and I were born and raised in uh, Dakotas. And uh, then we attended uh, school at Lincoln, uh, at Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska. So we were kind of uh, culture shy. So when we uh, went to San Francisco, they took us to the Haight-Ashbury district. My, what an eye-opener, a culture shock, so to speak. We did get over it and uh, continued to teach here and uh, enjoyed those times. Um, there weren't any hippies or flower children back in North Dakota. Another fond memory we have from uh, Paradise is uh, Miss Connor. She led out in the MV, Missionary Volunteer Society, and uh, we put on a play about the origins of the Adventist message in uh, the Golden West. And we toured. Uh, we were introduced in that play and introduced the audiences to Loughborough and Bordeaux. Uh, that made a deep impact upon me, and uh, I began to uh, look into the historical roots of uh, Seventh-day Adventism, and uh, so much so that Bonnie and I spent two summers volunteering at uh, the Heritage Center, the Adventist Heritage Center in Battle Creek. In fact, uh, I began collecting Adventist memorabilia. And if you ever have a chance to visit the Upper Ridge, the Megalia Seventh-day Adventist Church in our foyer, we have a rotating uh, display of some of the artifacts that uh, we've collected over the years. God was instrumental in the leading and guiding and formation of our early church, and uh, he continues to do that today. Uh, we were also privileged to lead out in the formation of that church, the, uh, Mer the uh, Megalia Church. Del Donovan was the first pastor. He baptized our daughter Marita there in the, in the church as the first person baptized in Megalia Adventist Church. Well, they say there's nothing permanent except change, and that became true for us. After 13 years of teaching at uh, Paradise Junior Academy, which is what it was known at, at that time, I took a call to be principal at Ukiah Junior Academy. And there I, I taught your beloved music teacher, Sherry Ballard Hansen. Uh, she was a student of mine during that time. Well, after four years as a principal of Ukiah, I decided teaching was much more enjoyable than being a principal. Uh, so I accepted a call to Lodi. I don't know if you're familiar with pop music, but uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Uh, they wrote a song, a tune called Stuck in Lodi. Um, well, it wasn't quite our theme song, but uh, we were there for quite a while. We uh, didn't feel we were stuck, but we did spend 24 years in Lodi. I taught at uh, the school there, and Bonnie worked as a school nurse in the Lodi Unified School District. I spent the last four years uh, working in a public school just a few blocks from our house in Lodi. When we were nearing retirement age, our daughter Marita and her husband Jeff were living in Sterling City. They urged us to return to the Paradise area. We had a lot of good memories from Paradise, and so our son-in-law, Jeff, uh, built us a new house in Sterling City. And you say, Sterling City? Yeah, 
Shortly before retiring and moving there, Marita accepted a position at Three Sisters Adventist School in Bend. And so they moved. So much for following your kids. Don't do it. <laughs> well, we lived in Sterling City for five years, made many friends, and became involved with the Historical Society as well as the Megalia Adventist Church and School. And we began volunteering at the hospice thrift shop. I list stuff on eBay for them and Bonnie works at the boutique. We enjoy our volunteer work. Uh, well, we sold the Sterling House in December of 2014, and then Jeff's father, Jeff Crew's father, Jim Crew, built us a new house in Megillia, and that's where we are now, overlooking Butte Canyon. We love it. Our daughter, Melanie, uh, lives there with us. She's uh, working on a project to raise funds for rare diseases, including LAM. She was uh, diagnosed with LAM, which is a rare lung disease, a progressive lung disease, a couple of years ago. And uh, she's working on a project now to raise funds for uh, combating those diseases. So I'd invite you to visit us there. I still work on uh, classic cars. Uh, Reggie Scarborough and I, under the professional supervision of uh, Craig Kroschel, built a pair of 1929 hot rods. Reg still has his. I sold mine to help finance our house. Well, that brings you up to date with my story, our story. Everybody has a story, and we'd love to hear yours. If I don't remember your name, I do have an excuse. I'm past the biblical three score and ten, and uh, there's three things that uh, happen after that in the golden years. The first is the silver goes. You know, the money, it's gone. <laughs> Second thing, the memory goes. And then, um, oh well, it'll come to me. <laughs> Alumni weekend is a time to refresh all those memories and relive the good old days, so enjoy. And we're going to enjoy now uh, a mission story that's brought to us, going to be brought to us by Rod Cassidy. After the mission story, we're gonna be taking up the offering, a special offering for the alumni you know, it costs money to put on the alumni program, and uh, this is the only chance you will have to give to that. But you will also have a chance to give to missions, and uh, Rod Cassidy and his wife have gone through a lot. You know, you wonder sometimes how the, the text in Romans, all things work together for good to them that love God, really works in real life. And sometimes it's difficult to see. But uh, Rod is going to give us an emphasis in terms of... Uh, how things have worked out with them, a special m mission emphasis, and uh, we're going to begin that with a, a video right now. So, Lauren, according to your flow chart, you're ready to roll the video, aren't you? Mercy, mercy, bring me to my knees. As the morning calls to light the darkened air. Heaven's story, breathing life into my Spirit, lift me from this wasteland, leave me go. Now I
I've learned uh, definitely hard work, because this is hard work. I've definitely learned how people live on the other side of the world. And I've definitely learned that God can use you to help people. He can use you in 10 days. He can use you in five days. If you're willing to let him, he will use you. And that's probably the most powerful thing. Father, hear your children call On the at your feet we fall Prodigals confessing all To the cross we bring our blame All our lifelong sin and shame In penitent we breathe your name Penitent we breathe your name by your love, by your grace, by the blood of Jesus, wash our sins away. Make us new today and heal us as we pray. Blind, but pray for eyes to see Where we're bound, Lord, make us free Stained, we plead for purity Where we're sick, apply your cure Take our guilt and make us pure For your mercy, Lord, is sure For your mercy, Lord, is sure by your love, by your grace, by the blood of Jesus, wash our sins away. Make us new today, 
heal us as we pray. Lord, we have no other place to go. Only you can heal the wound of our soul. So let forgiveness flow. Let forgiveness flow. Father, hear your children grow. Humbly at your feet we fall. Prodigals confessing all. To the cross we bring our plea. All our life from sin and shame. The penitent we read your name. Penitent we breathe. Father, hear your children My name is Brianna. Every time I fly an airplane, I experience freedom. The stress of the week melts away because I'm in a heavenly, burden-free environment. I want to be able to share a better type of freedom with people from different walks of life. Freedom and peace that comes from leaving the shackles of sin behind. That feeling that can only be achieved by being forgiven and set free in Jesus Christ.
Thank you so much for taking the time to consider me. That was my daughter, I'm Rod Cassidy. <clears throat> my wife is here, Mary. I want to first take a moment <clears throat> to thank Ethel Watson, Pastor Adams, for giving this, op this opportunity to us to share our daughter's mission trip experience back in 2013, as we've just seen from the video. <clears throat> now, in your bulletins, the title of my talk was M, God's MFL Club. Some of you probably wonder what, what does this stand for? <clears throat> it stands for Missionary for Life. Brianna was inducted in the Missionary for Life Club by David Gates, who spoke at her memorial service back at the beginning of January. Several years ago, we read his book, Mission Pilot, when Brianna was still young. And uh, it was an inspiration to her. And from that, she desired to go into mission aviation one day. Now, some of you um, probably don't know what has happened a week before Christmas. <clears throat> we lost our daughter in a fatal car crash on Skyway. And she was coming back from work. Somebody jumped over the meridian and collided head on with her. And though now is not the place, <clears throat> that experience that happened that day is a testimony to how God's fingerprints were all over in spite of the disaster, how he was bringing people into place to minister to our daughter and others. And uh, we have the story up at Brown's website, which I'll share with you at the end of my talk. And it's been a difficult three months for some of you who have lost a child. You understand what we're going through. And we thank you for your prayers. She received some of her training, uh, aviation training in Tennessee at 15 and a half she sold, at 16 she got her private license, and this past year she was finishing her commercial training, planning to take her commercial exam at the end of the year, just two weeks after the fatal crash. Also she was working on an AMP mechanics apprenticeship with the Oroville Airport. The MFL Club began in an Amerindian village in the Quarantine River that separates Guyana from, the, from Suriname back in 2013. Apparently, as has been communicated to me, dozens of young people are joining this club and it will soon swell into the hundreds. Now, <clears throat> the year that these mission tri trips took place, I want to thank uh, PAA for their emphasis on mission missions for our young people. It laid the foundation for Brianna to go on mission trips. She had been looking at going on the PAA mission trip to Thailand that particular year, but due to a change of plan, she instead joined up with Maranatha volunteers and the Northern California Conference, and they went to Panama with a group. Missionary for life, the second aspect of my talk, as we saw from Panama. It was here in Panama that she caught the missionary bug. Brianna had an internal spark plug. Please understand that there are two types of people in our world. There are the types that their light burns slow and long. 
And then there are others whose light burns fast and bright. Brianna's was one of those. She was a person of high drive with a beautiful personality. It was a very short life, but it was all of it, a missionary for life. And a friend had shared that phrase with us. I didn't come up with it. People who burn slow and long or fast and bright. Just a few days after our tragedy, he came to minister to us, and he shared with that. And we have been using that phrase ever since. Now, the project, the, the Panama team, as you saw from the pictures, they were building a school. It was a, a large school and an outreach center for those in the community. And um, if you, any of you have ever gone on short-term mission trips, you know that there's some work involved. It's hard work. They do have some fun time, but much work is involved, but it is also very rewarding. One of those rewards is developing close friendships. Brianna had developed some close friends on that trip. On Maranatha trips, volunteers become part of a bigger family. One of those who befriended her was a gentleman by the name of Stan. He wrote us a card after he heard of our tragic loss, and I'd like to read to you from that card. It has had an impact on young people. This is what he said. I so enjoyed the mission trip to Panama, and Brianna was a big part of it. She was a part of my team. She was a hard worker. We had lots of time to talk. She loved her family and had many dreams for her future. She had a deep, genuine relationship with Jesus. That was the basis for all her choices in life. The Bible says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. May Jesus bless and comfort you. Stan. And we thank Stan for that. Sam wanted to take Brianna and a friend of hers into the community one of the days toward the end of the trip to show them how impoverished these people are in other countries. And you saw from the couple pictures there Brianna took with some children from the community. It made a real impact on her life and was instrumental in molding her thinking to pursue a life of missions. We want a great number to be reached, even greater than before because of Brianna's influence. And this is one reason why when we have speaking engagements like this, we share. Because as we know, time is running out on this world. And what we do, we need to do quickly for the cause of God. There are many in other countries, as we all know. We've been a church of missions for many years. And yet there's still opportunity, young or old, for us to go, to be involved, short-term, medium-term, or even long-term. As you can see, many are hurting in these other countries. And if the Holy Spirit works on your heart, seriously think about devoting some of your time to doing that. It would be a tremendous blessing. This should inspire us to do more for the cause of Christ in mission service. The next trip that year was in the fall to Ecuador. And it was in Ecuador that Brianna fell in love with the people there. She had an instant connection with Maria. Maria was the one, she was a translator for Maranatha. She was the one near the end of that portion of the video the names were being read or seen on the video. She was in a blue outfit. Though Brianna welcomed the cool air from the high altitude of Mbato, 9,000 feet, she was one of the youngest on the trip. She noted that the others on the trip had a hard time adjusting to the thin air at that elevation. She called us to tell us that she could handle the high elevation because she was a pilot. A little tidbit, though you didn't see it on this one, we have um, video footage and 
and uh, some slideshows that show the facility that they were staying in, the hotel, she would have to, in order to have reception, she would have to get on top of the hotel to call us. And she would do this just about every night after people went to bed. She was a night owl. But it allowed her some privacy to talk to us and share with us about her experience there in Ecuador. As in Panama, she saw the great needs of the, in the country of Ecuador. Her heart was more and more receptive to Holy Spirit as she could devote her life someday to full-time mission service. It was really working. Holy Spirit was working on her heart. This is what he wanted her to do one day. It was while on her this trip in Ecuador that she really started thinking about gaining some medical training. As we are a people rich in medical heritage and it's in a very effective way to go into a mission service. She was thinking particularly about nursing. Plans were there made for a future trip to Peru. Now keep in mind, this was 2013. Throughout 2014, Browning was preparing to make the Peru trip this coming summer. She was going to stay with Maria, the one I mentioned, who was a resident of Peru, she was going to stay with her for a month. She had contacted, when she came back, she had contacted some companies and received some dental supplies for children. She was also accumulating clothes, school supplies, and even stuffed animals for an orphanage. She had been learning the Spanish language and was eagerly looking forward to become more bilingual while in Peru. Maria had a goal to use her for future Maranatha trips as a translator. Maria became like a second mother to Brianna on this trip, and because of how close they became, Brianna had decided she wanted to help Maria with the financial need to finish her home in Peru. Maria apparently had a home that she had raised some funds to finish to work on it, but Unlike here in America, they don't have the resources we do. And so it was a long, drawn-out process over some years. And Brianna found out about it. She says, when I return back to America, I'm going to get my commercial license one day. And when I get a job, I'm going to commit to helping you finish your house. In memory of Brianna, that will become a reality even though she is now passed away. I'd like to read from you a couple emails that Maria f sent us after she found out Brianna's passing. In January, she wrote this email. Thank you for your email. I don't have words to express my gratitude, especially to Brianna. We have had a good time on that mission trip. She was our official group photographer always smiling, hard worker, and a lovely girl with a big heart. Thank you for letting me share her testimony, and I will use the video for the glory of God. Then last month she wrote this. I shared yesterday about Brianna with some people here in Panama. Because remember, she's translated from Marin Austin, so she travels on different trips. And they were so impressed. As you said, the Lord is working in many different ways. My sister, referring to my wife, everything that Brianna did, thinking about our stay in Peru, breaks my heart. She was a wonderful girl. Everything planned. I promised to make her real dreams, to share the love that she has had for others, and in this case for Peru and me. I have never imagined that the Lord will use Brianna to make a dream, referring to the finishing of her house, become a reality because we had shared that with her. Keep in mind, it's, mission trips are not just going on a one-time excursion for a couple weeks, but it's really what's in the heart. Apparently, with Brianna's first mission trip, the Holy Spirit's working on her heart. I want to do this some more. This is exciting. And then she goes to Ecuador. And what a blessing that was. 
And the Lord is putting in her mind maybe some medical training so you can devote your life to this, to helping people in other countries. We need to come to the point where we feel the pain for these people. We, do, we want, want to be able to help them. On one of her trips, she had a conversation with an individual regarding the conditions in the world. Brenna commented by saying that she can't wait for the Lord to come. The lady responded by saying, oh, I don't want Jesus to come yet. I still have things I want to do before he returns. Grandma was shocked. Who wouldn't want the Lord to come? Later she told us what else could be more important than hasten the Lord's coming. I hope none here have that mindset. Haven't we delayed it long enough? The last part of the video clip focused on Japan where she had the opportunity to go and be a photographer for a lady and her son. And it was a tremendous blessing as you saw from these photographs. Japan was the country that she really adored. She was really attracted to the culture. Brianna had taken a language class in Japanese to become more familiar besides the Spanish class that she had already was taking. And she tr truly believed it to be the language of heaven. She had plans to return and possibly teach English for six months or a year there at some future time. The hundreds of pictures, you've just seen a few here, but we have over a thousand that she has taken, revealed how much she loved that country. And it is a beautiful country. Despite the beautiful dress and the lovely costumes, we saw a few pictures of the people there. This is truly a secular country in heathen. Though the people are very gracious people, yet there is very little knowledge of Christianity and the gospel, which only can liberate them. Brianna had a burden for these precious people, and we need to share that burden. Brianna was continuing with plans after she returned with her mission emphasis. By doing a videotaped segment, the last 30 second spot that you saw where she's standing in front of the, the airplane there, this was to win a sponsorship that was put on by the Quiet Hour that if she was chosen, she would be granted $2,500 for another mission trip. And so she had known about this for a few months and was preparing and according as you saw the clip, this was done just two weeks before her tragic death. She was also enrolled at U College for a nursing program in January. And this would have complemented her pilot training and been very effective, as I've already mentioned, in her role as missionary overseas. You know, I've thought about the, um, the life that she lived. And in the closing months of her life, we truly saw God at work, touching her heart, making her more receptive. You know, we all have issues in life. And she had had a relationship with a girl, a good girlfriend of hers, go sour. It was also on that mission trip in Panama. And this past year in August, she felt impressed to write her and to tell her that she was sorry things didn't work out. She felt that Unless I do it, unless I did be the bigger of the two, how can we be reconciled and live together in the kingdom? 
We didn't know about this letter until after her death. We came across it. Though she had told her mom a few weeks before that she took the steps to share with this girl that we need to make things right with each other. I wonder if the Holy Spirit was impressing upon her. Time was short for her. We were so glad that we heard about that. And I've thought about this many times. How many of us have issues with people and year after year, even decade after decade goes by, we don't clear the air. We don't go to them and say, listen, something happened back here. Let's just put it behind us. I'm sorry. Make things right. How are we going to live with each other in the kingdom if we don't clear these things up in the head? There's a little poem I picked up from somewhere. It said, a daughter's wealth of love is so great that the power of death and the victorious grave cannot extinguish its quenchless flame. Wow. And I, I see that that is fitting description of our daughter's life. And so as I wind this talk up, seriously think about the possibilities that we have before us to become involved in missions, even short-term missions. Some of you may have already done that. Some of you have been thinking about it for a few years. And yes, there's a financial commitment, but what type of God do we serve? Do we not serve a God who has all the resources of the universe? He's waiting for us to commit to helping. And it's not just overseas. I'm sure many of us have realized there's a mission field right here in America. A couple of years ago, I heard that there are now refugees coming to America in large droves. Could it be that God is bringing people from other countries here? so that we can reach them and they'll take it back to their homeland with the good news of the three angels' messages. So whether it's overseas, with, where there is great need, we all know that, or whether it's right here in our backyard, we need to have more of a mission-minded attitude. How can we lift up our hands before God and ask his blessing upon ourselves and our families when we are doing so little to help others, especially overseas. We certainly need missionaries, short-term, long-term, to commit to answering to the call of God. Whatever the country, whatever the need, the question is, are you making yourself available? Will you answer the call? Is God in your plans? We have a website set up for Brianna. We have pictures, more pictures. We have a blog my wife and I are doing. We also have some videos of her memorial service, her graveside, other videos when she was in flight. We also have a page that we are doing for those who have lost, especially children, that we've dedicated for them. Because everybody, as was said, everybody has a story. And we want to make our story, as well as their story, available to others. And you can go to briannacassidy.com and look up that information. We also are planning a foundation in the near future that we will use to help sponsor others for missions. Let us pray before I close. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege of having the freedom that we still enjoy in America. Touch the hearts of us while we still have a little time to become more mission-minded. And may the Spirit guide us so that we can be a blessing to those, whether overseas or right here at home, in a way that maybe we have not ventured out to do. Give us that conviction and may we follow through. We thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Rod, for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. Uh, we had the privilege of listening to Rod as uh, he presented uh, some of the events that had transpired very 
much at the close of uh, her life at uh, Megillio uh, some time ago, and uh, I believe there wasn't a dry eye in the, in the place. We were all moved and touched, and Rod and uh, Mary need to continue to be lifted up in our prayers. Uh, when you lose a loved one, it, uh, it doesn't go away. All right, at this time, I would like you to uh, find these little envelopes. There's some white envelopes, and I think with them there is a packet uh, showing the events of the weekend. This is the 33rd annual alumni weekend. And as you are aware, financial needs have to be met to have an alumni. Uh, fortunately, we have Ethel Watts and uh, Lauren Sutherland who have led out for years in this endeavor. And there are others working behind the scenes to make this weekend a reality. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank those people that uh, make Alumni Weekend possible. Now it's your turn to share. Rod has just shared with us the fact that uh, Paradise Adventist Academy uh, is still interested in mission emphasis. Sometimes we hear reports, well, Adventist education isn't what it used to be. Well, that's true. But there is still a vital emphasis on missions and uh, the giving to, to others. And uh, we can be a part of the MFL Club, the Missionaries for Life, by supporting this school and the projects such as the one that uh, Rod and Mary are endeavoring to set up. So uh, there are only two opportunities to fund the Alumni Weekend. One is the um, breakfast that will be held on Sunday, and that's not a big money raiser, but it's a fun event. And today, so inside those white envelopes, it shows, uh, please credit my gift too. Make your check out too. So if you'd like to have a, a tax deductible donation, you can do that. If you want to simply give some money, you can do that. But there are a lot of needs at, uh, at our school, and uh, we would certainly appreciate your uh, generous support as uh, we take up our offering this morning. So we'd like to ask the deacons to stand now, and we'll ask for the blessing on the offering. Loving and gracious Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give. Everything belongs to you. We're your stewards, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be wise stewards of the funds that you have entrusted to us. We pray for thy blessing upon this offering. May it be used to further your cause here. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the offering is being picked up. I'm going to go ahead and sing our special music number. This is the time they must sing. I want to encourage everyone to use the talents that God has given them to touch people's lives, as Brianna did and others that are sharing Jesus with others in our community and across our country to bring Jesus home. Let's go home, right? It's time to sing. I have tasted a freedom. I can go where he's leading. Where shackles can hold me no more. I have learned of life's essence, and I stand in his presence and sing with my heart, he is Lord. There are days filled with sorrow and plans for tomorrow. But this is the time I must see. And I know there's a reason why in his own season, God gives me a song I can sing. Keep silent, you mountains, you fields and you fountains, for this It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages, and this is the time I must sing. If I've seen and I've done, and I've gained and I've won, all the good things that life ever brings. 
Still I've tasted enough of life's miracle stuff that forever I just have to see. If the rocks would cry out, should his praises die out, the stones must keep silent as long as I breath for the singing, his praise will keep ringing, and I will keep singing my song. Keep silent, ye mountains, ye fields and ye fountains, for this is the time I must It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages, and this is the time I must sing. Some of you may not have known, I tried to put together a Ridgetone reunion. Ridgetone sang under the direction of Mr. Merlin Reeves many, many years ago, and it didn't come through. So I chose this song in honor of Ridge Tones because Mr. Reeves always sang that song during our concerts, and I hope it brought back some good memories. Thank you, Lynette and uh, Shelley, for sharing that special music with us. One of my favorite people, Scott Hoyland, is going to offer our benediction. We appreciate you coming and uh, continue to enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Let's bow our heads. Well, before we bow our heads, I've got to say something that uh, Marcel talked about. And that's a trip to San Francisco. For 38 years, I taught California geography, and almost every semester, I would recount that occasion to my classes about these Dakotaites coming to Haight-Ashbury what, 1968? And uh, I'll never forget riding down Haight Street with the windows open on a Sunday, Saturday afternoon. And a girl I knew from Chico was on the sidewalk, threw herself through the window, hugged me, said, Scotty, and put a string of beads around my neck. And I thought Bonnie was going to climb up on the behind the window, behind the seat, the back seat, to get as far away from these hippies as she could. It was one of the great uh, San Francisco experiences of my life. Anyway, thank you for recalling that, Marcy. Anyway, let's bow our heads and give thanks and praise to our God for the way that he has blessed Paradise Adverse Academy. Sovereign Father, we are so grateful. We praise you for the way that you have started Paradise Adventist Academy, the way that you have built it and blessed it through the years. We praise you for the hundreds and hundreds of young people that have been nurtured and trained in the principles and the precepts of the Christian gospel as they have gone to that, that school. And Lord, we pray that you would continue as you have blessed Paradise Adventist Academy in the past, so you will continue to bless it. You will continue to redeem young people through the blood of Jesus as they matriculate there, as they go to classes, and as they go on to whatever career you direct them to. And Holy Spirit, we pray that you will be present and active in their lives, both at school and as they go on to other pursuits. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for 
the testimony to the way you have worked through three lives. We honor you and thank you in the precious and powerful everlasting name of Jesus.